I designed this lizard folk layer in the RPG Stories World Builder. As an extra bonus, it was included in the project of 101 Battle Maps by Brave Alice. You can find all of the relevant web links in the video description. Here I will share how I designed this setting of a lizard folk layer, and I encourage for you to adapt the details according to whatever will work best for you. Lizard folk could appear in many different fantasy settings and game systems, along with diverse interpretations of the history and lore. In this iteration of a lizard folk layer, I wanted to convey two key aspects, including a watery environment and a tradition of crafting with natural raw materials in this environment. In most fantasy settings, lizard folk are reptilian humanoids. Most of their communities are situated in the places where you might expect to find large lizards. Often, but certainly not always, the setting is described as a swamp in a humid tropical jungle. I would encourage to consider all of the possibilities of places with marshlands, estuaries, and similar habitat ecology. Due to their cold-blooded reptilian anatomy, Lizard folk need to maintain their body heat by living in a naturally warm temperature. If your environment is not a naturally warm place, then I suggest to include a warm water spring or a steam vent. Otherwise, the lizard folk would need to create their own warmth artificially by hearths or by other means. In my understanding, lizard folk are known for their crafting skills, using raw materials from their natural environment to make all of their tools weapons, clothing, jewelry, musical instruments, traps, houses, and structures. You can imagine creative ways of using the natural materials, and I thought about a reference list of possibilities such as wood, flowers, grass, leaves, thorns, nuts, fruits, vegetables, vines, plant fibers, bones, teeth, horns, hides, hair, shells, feathers, stone, and soil. I did not include all of those things in this lizard folk layer, but you could use this inventory list when describing the details in your setting. I imagine that lizard folk use fire for cooking, lighting, and maybe for heating in some environments. I like to situate stakes or tripods outfitted with torches for lighting the major areas of activities and pathways. The placement of an open flame could be a concern if the location includes flammable swamp gas. Of course, nobody would leave an open flame unattended near a forest or near a house made of wood and thatch. You might consider if the lizard folk use fire for preparing earthenware pottery at a low firing temperature. Otherwise, containers may have included wooden bowls, woven baskets, or modified pieces of bamboo or gourds. In most fantasy settings, lizard folk do not use high firing technology of a forge or a furnace for making their own porcelains, metals, and glass. They might know about these technologies and raw materials, but overall they maintain their older traditions. In this particular lizard folk lair, the primary construction material is wood from the locally available trees. Most marshlands are not ideal places for finding large amounts of stone for construction material, although the lizard folk probably did access at least some stone from the neighboring environments. If the lizard folk were to create stonework constructions, then I would consider mostly the use of natural raw stones, arranged and stacked without any mortar and probably without much stone cutting. Otherwise, a technology of stone tools and perhaps some hard shells could allow for limited amounts of cutting and shaping of stones, but large amounts of stone cutting would be impractical without access to more durable tools such as made of metals. When designing this layer, I kept in mind that lizard folk can swim just as well as they can walk. They probably do not need to use boats for transporting themselves unless they are traveling over long distances or transporting large amounts of cargo. Perhaps simple rafts were useful for short distances while carrying equipment and supplies. I like the idea of lizard folk creating paddling or sailing canoes, but I did not add those options in this particular lizard folk layer. In some places, you can see wooden ladders, bridges, and walkways. These features could help when moving through change in elevation, when trying to keep the lizard folk or their cargo dry, or when crossing through dangerous waters with potentially deadly plants and animals. 
I considered that most of the houses were built atop sets of raised wooden pillars, posts, or maybe tree trunks. Beneath such a house, the ground probably was wet or mucky. The elevated positions should be above a flooding level that could happen seasonally or with extreme weather events or magical effects. For these structures built at ground level, they may have been used for short-lived or seasonal activities. Or the lizard folk were not bothered by the wet or mucky ground here. Some ground level structures simply could occupy higher ground or other terrain where the water could drain naturally. For this lizard folk layer, I wanted to include open sided houses. If the setting is a hot and humid place, then the open sided construction could allow for more airflow and cooling. Additionally, you might consider that the lizard folk society involved communal living without the modern day expectations of privacy. You could imagine infiltrators attempting to sneak under a house or over a roof. I would caution that the lizard folk are friendly with varieties of lizards or maybe other animals that habitually reside all around the houses, like pets or guards. Formal structure walls probably would be necessary at a fortification area intended to prevent or control the access. Additionally, sharpened wooden stakes could be positioned around the perimeter. Torches probably would be a good idea for lighting the exterior in order to see enemies approaching in the dark. Additionally, skulls and bones might be displayed as a way to intimidate potential intruders. The lizardfolk probably marked the outer perimeter of their territory, using carved wooden pillars or idols, skulls or bones mounted on stakes, or other symbols in the trees or in the ground. After intruders pass through the perimeter markers and warning signs, then they might encounter a series of traps. The classic pit trap might not work so well in this watery environment unless the goal is to make an intruder fall into a pit of water, possibly triggering an additional component. Whether as an additional component or as a standalone trap, I would imagine a falling net, a set of poisoned darts, or a tunnel or channel opening that could bring a flood of water, along with maybe a hungry crocodile, a giant constrictor snake, or a swarm of biting carnivorous fish. If you want to use poison in the darts or spikes of a trap, then I encourage to make the poison and the antidote as natural ingredients available through the local plants and animals. These kinds of environmental details can link with a side quest or even a central quest of an adventure. The traps should be designed in a way that the lizard folk know about them and can avoid them, yet they will be aware of when a trap has been triggered. The lizard folk should be able to prepare for intruders, check the traps, and re-equip the traps when needed. I like the idea of outfitting the traps with sounding alarms of bamboo chimes or whistles. The intention is for the lizard folk to be alerted to the presence of intruders and then to act accordingly. I would caution to consider how the traps might interact with the various animals in the environment. Will the lizard folk want to trap some of these animals for food or for crafting materials? Will they prefer for some of the animals to avoid being trapped? In the surrounding habitat, I would include diverse wildlife. The lizard folk probably lived comfortably with most of the animals. They might not eat the reptiles that conceivably could represent their relatives or ancestors. The primary protein foods probably were the fish, shellfish, and birds. Additionally, the lizard folk could obtain more of their carbohydrates and other nutrients from plenty of plant-based foods, such as the fruits and nuts from the trees. You could consider variable degrees of how the lizard folk might manage the natural forest, including the possibilities of arboriculture and various forms of gardening. I would advise caution about using fantasy plant creatures in this kind of environment in terms of how they would interact with the lizard folk. In a fantasy setting, the lizard folk might not be the apex predators of their environment. They probably are very close to the top of the food chain, topped only by something else incredible, such as a dinosaur or a dragon. You might consider that the lizard folk worship, respect, or fear this incredible creature. Maybe more than one such creature is involved. Whatever might be the relationship, the lizard folk could use loud chants, drums, flutes, and deep-sounding horns to attract the creature or to communicate. 
I imagined that the lizard folk created musical instruments that mimicked the sounds of birds, reptiles, and other parts of the environment, including whatever giant or incredible creature lived in this place. You probably have noticed the open layout of this lizard folk layer. People could approach from any direction. Within the setting, people could choose any direction of movement. The characters can pass through various zones, such as the outer perimeter of territorial markers, a zone of traps, and zones of different plant and animal habitats. In total, these zones can present a series of experiences and opportunities for characters to learn about the environment and to prepare for the major challenges of this place within your story or campaign setting. You could consider what may be the objective here, such as obtaining a special ingredient for a poison or an antidote or another purpose, retrieving or protecting a clutch of eggs, rescuing a prisoner, starting or stopping a ritual ceremony, creating an alliance, or defeating an enemy. The primary objective could be linked to any location here that makes sense for you. The sub-steps or supporting steps toward the primary objective could be linked to other locations of your choice. Additionally, you could consider how each encounter or activity links with a generalized zone, and then you could adjust the specific location of something according to whatever will work best in your case. I hope that you like this design of a lizard folk layer. What stories and adventures do you imagine in this place? Please share your thoughts, suggestions, and experiences in the comment section.